What is a function? In simple terms, it is something that takes an input, processes it and gives an output. A function can be as simple as x plus 1 that takes an input x, adds a number to it and gives output. A function can also be an extremely complex entity made up of several different functions. But ultimately, a function in mathematics is something that takes an input, applies some logic to it and gives an output. Functions in computer science are similar. But that's not it. Function is not something that is limited to abstract mathematics or computer code. If you look around carefully, literally everything can be expressed as a function. How long will it take for a ball to hit the ground if I just leave it? Well, it depends. From what height did you throw the ball? With these inputs, one can fairly predict the time it takes as an output. Or one can say that you giving it potential energy is the input and it falling down via kinetic energy is the output. In a computer game, you press a mouse button as an input and your character, it shoots bullets as an output. Someone writing 69, 420 is an input. People commenting nice is an output. Human brain, it takes in some input in the form of stimuli and gives a response as an output. You are a person. You like memes. You see a meme. Meme is an input. Your brain processes the image, analyzes its meaning, depending on all your previous experiences with the memes and your sense of humor, which mostly depends on your nature and nurture, it then calculates how amused you were after looking at the memes. You laughing was a response or an output. Now let's say we are able to create a human digitally which to any input would give the exact same response as you. So is that you? Does it have the same consciousness as you? Well, that's an issue for a later debate. But now let's focus on recreating you. How would you recreate a function? There can be two methods. First, just know the function. Just know how is it utilizing the input and creating the output. In simpler terms, just know the formula. So in the case of recreating a human, what you will have to do is take all the information of each and every of the 100 billion neurons in the human brain and know how each of it is connected to each other. Observe how each of them interacts and create a perfect model of it. That is technically a lot of work and we are nowhere near to recreating it. Something similar was shown in the episode named White Christmas in Black Mirror where a device was inserted in the head and it recreated a digital clone of a person whose work was to be the person's slave and its awareness and consciousness was the same as the original person. Ignoring all the ethical issues, we are nowhere near recreating human consciousness this accurately in terms of technology. So what would the other method be? In cases like human brain, when the function can get extremely complex, there is a simpler method. Believe it or not, the other method is being used on you right now as we speak. Another method would be to take a very long list of inputs and its corresponding outputs from the function and use this data to predict a hypothesis that mimics our original function, which if you notice carefully is machine learning. A very advanced form of it was shown in the Be Right Back episode of Black Mirror, in which there was a system that scoured all of the internet to look at the social media activity of a dead person and tried to recreate a model of the dead person digitally based on all his posts, comments, likes, dislikes and every other data available of them. Providing additional data like voice and video of the person leads to a more accurate model of that person. But just like any other machine learning algorithm, it's not 100% accurate. The better the hypothesis fits the data, the higher the accuracy. And it can get really close to 100% if you provide enough data on the subject. But also consider that this method is much more easier to execute and requires much less computing power and resources than the earlier method. And since the number of the neurons in the brain and the information about how they interact will be much more than the number of the sentences a human will ever speak or the actions he will ever do. And it's not that out of reach too. In fact, it is happening to you right now as you watch this video. The YouTube algorithm, it knows what it shows to you. It knows what videos you have clicked on, which ones you have watched. How long did you watch them? Which ones you liked, which ones you disliked? It has a huge amount of information about you and with all the input that it provided to your brain, what output you gave it. And using all that, it created a digital model of you inside its system, with which it tries to analyze what kind of video are you more likely to watch and binge on. What kind of videos were more likely to keep you engaged? Make you spend more and more time on the platform so that it can make you watch more and more ads. And it seems like it's working. The average time that people spend watching online videos has doubled in the last four years. The algorithm seems to be winning. Anyways, subscribe to this channel and like the video so that you can let the algorithm know that you can fight back.